Hi, so um, welcome to part one of the review for um, probability for the purposes of mathematical statistics. So this is going to be just a really quick, um, really reminder of uh, some of the basic concepts of probability. Um, so what, what are the basic objects when one thinks about probability? The basic thing is the notion of a sample space. We think of a sample space as the results um, obtained after doing some experiment. And um, the other thing, of course, that we need is a way of assigning to the different results of that experiment probabilities. So typically we do that by assigning to particular subsets of our, um, of our sample space, in particular subsets E, some numbers, um, P of E, which are going to be in the range 0 to 1. Um, we think about these subsets as events. They are the collection of potential outcomes of our experiment which happen to give a result in that subset um, E. And P of E is the probability that we'll obtain a result um, inside of that, um, inside of E. So what, um, what rules should these um, satisfy? So this uh, P function, what should it satisfy? Well, when you apply it to the entire set, the entire sample space, one, so that is if you do an experiment, you will get some result, and the probability of the empty set uh, is zero. In other words, there is no chance that nothing that well, you won't get a result. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but um, there we are. Um, the other important um, uh, assumption that we have is that if you have some collection of potential outcomes, some collection of subsets of your sample space, which are mutually exclusive, in other words, which do not intersect each other, then the probability of something happening inside the union is the sum of the probabilities of each particular uh, event occurring. And that's it. Those are the those are the things that we want. And once we have that, we say we are doing probability. All right. Useful notation um, is this concept or useful notion is the concept of independence. So we say two subsets are independent if the probability of them both occurring is the product of the probabilities of either one of them occurring. Okay. So now, um, done with that, let's talk about random variables. So what is a random variable? Well, a random variable is just a function from the sample space to the real numbers, just some function. Um, so for example, if our sample space consists of people chosen at random, then we could take such a person and measure their height. And that gives us a real number, the height, um, as a, you know, kind of something that is randomly sampled from our sample space. Um, we have nice uh, convenient notation for talking about um, probabilities having to do with random variables. So we'll say probability x is less than some little x here is just some fixed real number. The probability that our random variable is less than some real number, what does that mean? That just translates to the probability that we, our experiment results in some outcome S for which the measurement of S is less than the real number X. So this is just an alternate convenient notation to discuss random variables. Really is just something in the prior framework, but it's a more convenient notation. Uh, similarly, um, did I write the same thing twice? No, I didn't. Okay, you, we could say x is bigger than some little x, or the probability that x is between a and b. Um, you know, and we we make similar sense of this. It's just the probability of obtaining an of an outcome uh, little s such that s of little x is between a and b, or you know, etc. All right. Another uh, important concept is the notion of functions of random variable. So if you have some random variable x and we have some function g, then we write g of x for a new random variable given by the composition. So just kind of graphically, what, what do, how do we think about this? So we have x is a function from our sample space to the real numbers, then we can compose that with this function g. And that result we could call uh, g of x. So maybe we measure their height in inches and then we convert that to centimeters and g of x is the height in centimeters, for example. Now, now that we know what random variables are, and they're really kind of the main players in probability, the question is, uh, what are the nice ways of encoding the information in a random variable? And for that, we have a few different options. So on the one hand, there's this thing called the cumulative distribution function. 
uh, abbreviated CDF. So by definition, this is some function capital F of X of little x, and its value at little x is just defined to be the probability that a random variable is less than little x. This is some way of just encoding the probabilities associated with our random variable um, capital X. Another way to encode the information is just to list the probabilities that a random variable obtains different specific values. This really only makes sense if the random variable doesn't have like a continuum of possible values, but rather just um, can have just some discrete set of values, you know, like one, two, three, four, and five, or something like that. In that case, we define the probability distribution, um, which is this function P of X, to be the probability that capital X is equal to X. So just a list of probabilities. Like imagine you roll a die, there's a one in six associated to the, the getting a one, a one in six to a two, a one in six to a three, et cetera. You flip a coin, there's a one half associated to a heads and a one half associated to a tail. Uh, these are probability distributions. On the other hand, for continuous random variables, we don't want to do this. Um, this doesn't quite make sense. Instead, we define the probability density function. So a probability density function for a random variable is some function f of x that has the property that if you wanted to figure out the probability that your random variable is between a and b, you do it by integrating the probability density function between a and b. And that's the definition of the probability density function. So all three of these things, you know, when they, when they particularly apply, we think of as containing generally the information in our random variable. Um, now, in fact, there are um, other ways to encode our random variable. Uh, and this is going to be important in particular moments um, encode information about a random variable. But first we have to say what moments are. And before that, we have to say a little bit about uh, the concept of expectation. So what, what is expectation? Well, by definition, the expected value of a random variable x is, well, I'm going to give you two definitions. In the discrete case, it's the sum of x times the probability of obtaining x. This is the um, probability distribution in the discrete case. In the continuous case, this is the integral of x f of x dx. So in both cases, these are kind of um, analogous to the notion of uh, center of mass, for example. In physics, this is the formula that you do to figure out um, which uh, at where the, where the mass is distributed if you substituted f of x um, for instead of being the probability density, if it was like the mass density, or in the discrete case, if it was just concentrations of masses at different points, then this would give you the center of gravity. All right. Um, the expectation has a really convenient property that's um, good to kind of remind you guys of, and that is that the expectation of a sum is the sum of the expectations. The expectations of a scalar multiple of a random value val variable is the scalar times the expected value of x. Okay. Those are convenient. Um, and um, it's also useful to keep in mind this uh, nice way of thinking about expectation of functions of a random variable. So if you have some random variable x, you can do g of the random variable. And the expectation has these very nice formulas. So the expected value of g of x is um, of g of this random variable x is just instead of integrating, instead of taking the sum of x f of x, you take the sum of g of x f of x, and similarly in the integral case. These are really useful formulas for expectation of functions around of variables, and, um, and now we're ready to discuss moments. Okay, moments. So the ith moment of a random variable about some number a is by definition the expected value of x minus a to the i. There you go. Moments. We're done, right? Um, there are, um, let, let's just play an example really quick. So um, suppose you have x given by um, a probability density function evenly distributed on the interval 0 to 1. Um, so this is one nice little random variable. Then what's the zeroth moment? Well, it doesn't really matter where I look at it because it's going to be something to the 0. And um, that's really the expected value of just 1 which is one. The first moment about zero, for example, we'll do zero. 
that's the expected value of x minus 0 to the 1, which is the expected value of x, which is you do that by the previous formula we did by just taking x times f of x. Uh, there should be a dx, dx, uh, and integrating that. So we're really just integrating x, and that's 1 half. Um, we could look at the second moment, for example, about 1, just for fun. That's the uh, expected value of x minus 1 squared. So what do we do? We just look at f of x times, you know, it's like times a 1 again. Um, and you just play that out, and you get a third. OK, so those are some moments. Now, moments, it turns out, encode extremely important information about our random variables. So here are some particular ones of interest. The expected value of x, just the expected value of the variable itself, is called the mean. Um, and this is the zeroth moment of, oh, sorry, the first moment about the origin, you could say, expected value of x minus 0 to the 1. Uh, the variance is the expected value of x minus the mean squared. It's a useful one. Um, we have this nice notation mu i for the ith moment about the mean in general. So the variance is the second moment about the mean. But uh, in general, we can look at the ith moment about the mean. Or we can look at the ith moment about zero. And that's the other interesting uh, case. So for example, the first moment about zero, which we've already commented about, is the expected value or the mean. Now, here's the crazy thing. Usually, random variables are determined by their moments about zero. So I won't really talk about usually. We're just going to pretend that that says always, just for the sake of this, uh, this discussion. So random variables are determined by their moments about zero or, or any other fixed point. I could have said their moments about one or their moments about whatever. But um, so what does that mean? That means that if you just give me a list of particular numbers, that tells you everything you need to know about x, just that list of numbers. It's an infinite list, but it's still just a list of numbers. It's kind of nice. Um, it's convenient often, and we will package these numbers into a power series. So we'll just formally just take these numbers to be coefficients of some power series, which we'll write like this. This is like what you would do if you, ima you imagine this is what the kind of expression you get from a Taylor series expansion. And this formal power series, which we think of as a function of a new variable t, is called the moment generating function for our random variable x. And as we've seen, because, the, um, because these moments um, are these coefficients, if you, and these coefficients are of the Taylor series, you can reconstruct them from the moment generating function by taking the ith derivative and evaluating at 0. That's going to give you those coefficients for that power series. And so you see that the random variable is determined by its moment generating function. Um, alternately, and it's very useful for theoretical purposes, we can write down this moment generating function as the expected value of this, um, of this particular expression. This is a function of our random variable, but where the function depends on some new parameter t. And so then the answer depends on t as well, and you get this power series. All right. Um, these moment generating functions have this really convenient property that it's easy to look at the moment generating function of a sum of random variables in terms of the original moment generating functions. This is really awkward in terms of probability density functions and distributions and stuff like that. But if you are um, looking at the moment generating function of a sum, it's the product of the moment generating functions of the sum ands. And, um, this becomes a very useful tool for identifying random variables that we're just going to kind of see on the street when we uh, do statistics. We're going to say like, oh, here's a random variable. I wish I knew what that was. And we'll be like, oh, but I know it's moment generating function. And it's the same as this other moment generating function. So it's the same random variable. That's the kind of thing that, we, that we'll do. OK, um, that's all for now. So um, we will see you next time uh, on our continued journey through statistics. Thanks.